The following is brought to you by the Eureka City School District. Starting fall 2013, parents will have two middle schools from which to choose during the open enrollment period starting January 7th through January 25th, Catherine L. Zane Middle School and Winship Middle School. The following DVD is intended to give parents and students a chance to meet the principals and educational department chairs for both schools before making a choice. And now, a message from Eureka City School Superintendent Fred Van Vleck. We have some excellence going on inside of our classrooms inside of this district, and we have a lot of things that Eureka City Schools can really be proud of as we uh, move forward in our education. And I think we need to do a better job of uh, getting those great things that we're doing inside the classroom out to the community and, and letting the community know some of those fantastic things that we're doing inside the classroom. I'm proud to say that my children attend Eureka City Schools, and I look forward to a long future of my children attending Eureka City Schools. If I was to pick the number one thing that's uh, a concern for me in Eureka City Schools and a direction that I want to take the district, and that would really be focusing on the perception of the community with Eureka City Schools. Um, from my perspective, we have uh, far too many parents that have lost their trust in Eureka City Schools and have decided to take their children to other school districts that surround our school district. And I think uh, that it's important for me to restore the faith of the community in Eureka City Schools because, again, um, like I said earlier, I really believe that uh, we have some fantastic things going on inside the classrooms and we have some fantastic teachers in Eureka City Schools that are doing great things for children. And um, our district is uh, rich with those teachers that are doing great things for children. And I think that uh, our community needs to be more aware of uh, what we're actually doing in Eureka City Schools. I'm Kathy Cloney Gardner and I'm the principal of Winship Middle School. Winship Middle School is where I learn to open the doors for learning for myself and I look forward to giving you that same opportunity. You have another choice for your middle school this year and I look forward to introducing you to the new Winship staff. Thank you so much for taking the time to view this DVD. And please remember, open enrollment is January 7th through January 25th. Come visit Winship where we explore, discover, and succeed. People who are going to be viewing this are going to be looking at like, oh my gosh, she was my teacher. Or she was my, she was my daughter's teacher. I know her. I know that what she's saying is true. I know her. So, and it's not just me. It's like most of the people on these leadership teams have that, and so it's you can't buy that. You can't, I mean, a reputation is a reputation, and you can't, so it is transparent. So I, whatever I say, if the people on the other end of this DVD know me to be different, it's gonna be ineffective, but it's not different. They know me to be that. They've seen me for 24 years be a servant leader. Yeah, so, it's, so we have an advantage in that sense with this whole, not just Winship, but I mean, every we, Eureka City Schools has an advantage because we're just stating the truth. It can't get better than that. Well, gosh, science is just fun. They're, they're, they, they come in and they're so ready to do hands-on. They're ready to manipulate materials, to explore, to investigate. They, they don't want to just sit there in front of the desk and fill out a worksheet. They want to do things and they're very active. And so I have them moving them out around my room, getting their supplies and investigating different things. And so they're, they're using their whole body as they're learning. I like teaching math because to me it's so satisfying when you solve the puzzle of math and put all the numbers together and then you get that right answer. It's just, there's a good feeling you get inside, just that enjoyment of learning is um, the kids see it in me and uh, they begin to enjoy their learning as well. And it's that moment when a child is looking hard and trying to figure something out and you can see it in their eyes. They don't have to tell you when they have the right answer or have solved the problem. You can just see it in their eyes that, ah, I got it now. And that to me is the most satisfying feeling. I'm a sixth grade teacher and um, I love to do things just a little bit different, a little bit more creative, a little more interesting. I like to bring kids uh, projects that uh, don't remember the rest of their lives. I like to do things that um, put them out in the community. Um, I have a little bike club that I'm going to have at, at uh, Winship and, and we uh, operate every day uh, after school and we're going to be teaching bike safety and, and uh, 
riding kids around the neighborhood. What it brings is a sense of independence. I think it um, helps the environment. I think there are lessons with um, exercise and uh, being physically fit. There's PE, there's, there's uh, math, uh, we're gonna talk about there's science. We, we do a, a unit on the, respira uh, the respiratory system and um, you know, there's those, those kind of academic things, but it's really a lot of fun too. I'm a three ring circus when I'm in front of the class. I want the kids to, um, you know, stay with me, be engaged. Um, I, I have good rapport. I spend hours getting to know my students really well. In fact, I think that's the best thing about teaching language arts. My students get to write to me about themselves and feelings they have. And, and so of all the subjects, sometimes I feel like I'm the teacher they know best and who knows them best because they've shared with me. We're living right now in an age of change in education and it's a very exciting change. I think it's, the teachers are welcoming this change. The colleges and businesses have been telling us, hey, we don't ask kids to bubble in these questions. We want thinkers and we've been saying we want thinkers. I'm really excited about that and I think the opening of Winship allows us to join that revolution and start bringing that into our classrooms because we're, we're going to have to create and cultivate those thinkers and we need to change our way of, of delivering instruction and we need to allow the kids to practice that thinking skills and I think that's going to be very exciting at this time. It's almost like a revolution within education. Zane is a very progressive school. We have a very um, excited teaching staff and although we have a veteran staff they stay up on the state-of-the-art teaching strategies and methods our whole staff was trained in constructing meaning, which is a, a method of delivering uh, the lesson, any lesson, in a way that's accessible to all of our students, whether they're, what, regardless of their background, whether they're a native speaker, an English language learner, it doesn't matter. It's a state-of-the-art teaching strategy. We also um, work on explicit direct instruction, which is another teaching strategy that where students can access the curriculum. Most of our teachers teach in uh, pairs, so our desks are not singular in a row like they used to be maybe when some of us went to, to middle school. But they um, are, are teaching, we use a thing called Think, Write, Pair, Share, where they have partners, AB partners throughout the day, so that it's not the teacher talking all the time. The teacher asks, asking the critical, after delivering the important instructions, asking critical questions, but the t students are talking amongst themselves and helping to figure it out, and that really embeds their own learning. What's going to be exciting about Zane is bringing, we're, we have both uh, elementary school teachers coming up from fifth grade to work in the sixth grade, and we have, now we have some infusion of high school um, individuals down as well. And so when you take a look at the, uh, this whole process, it's going to improve the brand K-12 for Eureka City Schools. Now there's an articulated program that's going to be for kids moving through. And so there isn't those gaps and there isn't those stops and starts. And so those elements that I can bring are those successful elements that already exist at Eureka High School. And I can, I can infuse those elements into, into different programs in a way that makes the, makes the progression seem logical for students. Zane has a lot of, um, has a very positive um, intervention system where we are very proactive and we help to make sure that all students um, are served um, and have the educational um, basis to go on to high school. So we um, focus a lot on mathematics and language arts and we have um, multiple levels of um, intervention. Um, it's called a response to intervention system. It's a tiered like a pyramid and the bottom 80% of students fit into most um, edu fit into the regular education environment, and then about 15% of those students need extra support, and then the about 5% of those students need more intensive support, which would be like special education. Um, but that 15%, we really um, focus on making sure that that 15% is um, given the support they need to be um, successful at school. My role is to prepare the kids for their future and to lay the foundation for them to be successful as those classes that they take become more and more important in terms of the choices that they'll have as adults. 
So I want to lay a really great foundation so that when they get to the next level they have options and further options and it just kind of blossoms from there and they move on to high school where they take the classes that are more interesting to them or, or of interest to them where they have options for college or trade school or wherever they decide to go. It's, for me it's about giving them opportunities. One of the things that I think that I do believe in a classroom is a bonding. And one of the questions you had asked earlier is, well, what, what, what really are you all about? Well, I think that people are networks. And that when I meet the 162 people who walk through my door, that's 162 networks that I have the opportunity to create. And the more networks in this world that we create, the greater we have a structure to begin to make foundations in this world where we can do things that is competitive and innovative and creative. So it's about those networks. You make no networks, you have nothing to stand on to keep. As they say, we stand on the shoulders of giants. So you have to make the giants. A big part of science, uh, uh, understanding what is relevant and what is just background noise. Because they're gonna be bombarded with so much stuff from all these different media s sources that being able to become better thinkers and training their brain, that's a big part of it, training their brain to sort of filter out the nonsense and get to the core of whatever the question is. And we get to that by asking the questions, doing the labs, the experiments, the research, and then they find out this is what it was I was really trying to find out, and these things were just kind of distractions. So they become better thinkers, and they see, I mean, it doesn't mean they can't listen to or check all that stuff, but they become more discerning about what's real information and what's just, you know, background fluff. Well, at Zane, we have a, an, an interesting program in that we are a school that's big enough to have a period for 8th graders and a period for 7th graders. We teach a lot. We teach all the fundamentals. We spend more time on teaching fundamentals of music and the ideas of music than we do performing music. Because if you understand something, you're going to be able to learn it faster and perform it faster. At Zane, we spend all our time, especially up front, learning music. So when we get a song, we can sight read the song and work on subtleties of the song and learn them very quickly. So the amount of time we actually spend rehearsing is actually less than many other schools because they teach by rote and we teach by knowledge. I spend a lot of time focusing on culture and I'll break culture into four areas. Uh, we'll talk about the customs, the way of life, the art, and the beliefs of any group of people. And so throughout the course of the year, we can refer back to that and say, uh, frame answers to questions. Well, one thing I do is I put, I'm a guitarist, I'm in, I'm in a couple bands, so I'll take songs that, that they have on the radio and I'll change the lyrics. And, um, you know, they're, they're willing, they'll sing along, they'll um, <laughs> try to make it fun that way. Well, you know, I think I have an, a, a unique perspective on both kinds of students, students who get it quickly and students who don't. Because when I was in middle school, actually, when I was in high school, I never understood math. Math was outside my, my realm of understanding, and I really struggled with it. And it wasn't until college that it really clicked for me, and I ended up becoming a math major, got my bachelor's degree in mathematics. So I understand both students, and I can take them both, you know, where they need to go. If a student doesn't understand, I'm perfectly suited to, to, to know where they're coming from <laughs> and say, hey, I understand what you're going through. This is, this is challenging stuff. But if a student really wants to excel, I'm also there for them. You know, I've done the calculus and all the rest of it, and so I can take them as far as they want to go. So I, I like being in both camps. I think for a lot of math teachers, you know, math always came easy to them. So they don't always understand the student who struggles. And I understand both really well.